Hi guys, my name is Valerie and I'm a real Prague guide. In our today's video, we're gonna talk about absent. A lot of people come to Prague and they see absent stores, absent bars, and they wonder why. Is it a thing here or is it just a tourist trap? This is what we're gonna find out today. A lot of locals view absent as something non-traditional and even more than that, the source of their misfortunes because stack parties love the absent. If you follow the royal way, you will stumble upon many stores that sell absent that looks like window cleaner or the one with the pot plant that only makes you high as a rock on the bottom of the ocean. I was caught up in a swirl of absent bottles and even though I haven't had any absent yet, I already began feeling strange. By me, I'm French. No, by me, you will be high as a kite. Don't listen to these fake and go for the proper Swiss absent. You are in the Czech Republic, young lady. You should drink Czech absent. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, before making this video I knew next to nothing about Absent, which is why I emailed the person who makes it, and that is the owner of the Bairns Father Absent, the most favorite Czech Absent of Johnny Depp. I also invited Johnny for a drink, but he never replied. Oh well. Bairns Father very kindly answered all of my stupid questions about Absent, and I of course did my own research, so this video is based on that. And it is not sponsored unfortunately. But let's go. I've decided to check out two bars and try the absinthe there, but first a little bit of history. Absinthe is made of common wormwood or Artemisia absinthium. If you're a history nerd, you know that in Greek mythology Artemisia was a daughter of Zeus, the goddess of the hunt, forest and childbirth. Artemisia absinthium was used as a cure for labor pains, menstruation cramps, getting rid of intestinal worms and rheumatism as early as 1552 BC. Herbs like anise and coriander were added to sweeten the medicine. Finally, I have a good excuse to drink absinthe. It's good for my health. But Valerie, you're fine. I mean my mental health, lots of. Let's go. There are many places where you can try absinthe in Prague, but most of them will serve it in a shot glass, light it on fire and make you down it. Which makes sense because it will taste like burnt gasoline and you better suffer through it quickly. This is a marketing technique invented in the Czech Republic that was used to promote absinthe. I think it did the exact opposite. The fire makes it look cool and that's what all people want to be, I guess. Cool. The proper way of drinking absinthe is more sophisticated. I went to Hemingway Bar to learn more about it. If you want an eloquent and detailed explanation on how to drink absinthe, you can watch this video. This is just my absinthe for dummies explanation. The proper way of drinking absinthe is mixing it with water. One part absinthe, three part water proportion. It is supposed to be a long drink. Sometimes they pour water on the sugar cube. When the water mixes with the absinthe, it slowly becomes cloudier. This is known as louching. And voila, this is how absinthe should look like. The second place I went to is called the Green Devil. It's a quiet place with some really funky decorations. And a strong opinion that absinthe was created by French and Swiss and the Czech absinthe isn't the real one. We'll get to that later. First, let's try it. And because we're in Prague and not in Paris, we went for the local absinthe. One with a little bit of anise, and of course the favorite absent of Johnny Depp. The Baron's father absent was served the traditional way, while the other one, I do not remember the name, was served Czech style, meaning in the flames of Satan. Unlike what everyone says about absent with the low to zero anise content, the first absent tasted sweeter than I expected. The prevalent flavor is of course wormwood, so you will taste the herbs of goddess Artemisia. The second absent was just ashes. Okay. It's like I was drinking devil's c Now you know the proper way of drinking absinthe is mixing it with water. This is how they were drinking it in 19th century when absinthe was at the peak of its popularity. As we mentioned before, it was used as a remedy for hundreds of years and in 19th century soldiers were taking it as malaria preventive. They brought the taste for absinthe back home and soon it became popular in bars, restaurants, cafes and cabarets. So much so that 5 o'clock was nicknamed the Green Hour. It actually makes a perfect long drink. Let me quote our absinthe specialist here. 
The Epsom plant contains terpenes oils. One of them is called Thuyon and has psychoactive properties like nicotine, caffeine, sugar or chocolate. Because it provided an increase in the flow of neurotransmitters, creative types would consume it when their brains were tired and they could not produce more art, poetry, literature and music. Because of this, the beverage was nicknamed the Green Fairy. It provided inspiration and creativity to the tired mind. Long story short, absinthe does not turn you into a useless piece of crap, but a highly functional individual that is able to have long philosophical conversations. And you know which drink did not want to share its connection to philosophy? In Vino Veritas. Wine, of course. Winemakers felt threatened by the growing popularity of absinthe, and they decided to play dirty and started to spread rumors that absinthe is poisonous, makes you hallucinate, in fact, you will trip so bad you might actually murder people. And in 1905, they got a perfect opportunity to fabricate a case against absinthe. Because in 1905, a French farmer called Jean Lafray killed his wife, his two daughters, and tried taking his own life after he consumed and let me actually look at the list because it's pretty long. Seven glasses of wine, six glasses of cognac, one coffee laced with brandy, two mint liquors, and two glasses of absinthe. After that, he also ate a sandwich. That's an important detail. Guess which one of these beverages was blamed for the crime? So in 1905, they created a petition to ban absinthe and you couldn't see the Green Fairy anymore in Brazil, United States, Belgium, Switzerland, France, and Netherlands. But does absinthe make you hallucinate? Not really. Modern researchers found out that absinthe has very low psychoactive properties, not more than in sage or oregano. And do you trip when you eat tomato sauce? But you know which countries never formally banned absinthe? Spain, Portugal, Great Britain, and here. Yeah, Czechs produced absinthe since 1915. It was insanely popular, especially during the times of the first Czechoslovakian Republic. But even before that, in 1880s, people were drinking it in restaurants and cafes. So all these haters that say absinthe isn't a traditional drink here have no idea that much like no Czech parties today go without drinking beer, Slivovice, or Becherovka, parties in 19. 20s always had people sipping on absinthe. Still don't believe me? I have pretty cool proof to show you. Follow me. The Art Deco Café Slavia is one of the most famous cafes in Prague, opened in 1863. This place is the epitome of the Czech national pride. It's standing right in front of the National Theater, next to Vltava River, with the view of the Prague Castle. It was visited by Franz Kafka, Jaroslav Seifert, Rainer Maria Rilke, Antonin Dvorak. Among many decorations there, you will find this painting, The Absent Drinker by the Czech painter Viktor Oliva. Oliva, as many other bohemian painters, visited Paris where he tried absent and brought it here. If absent hadn't been part of Czech culture once upon a time, I doubt that this painting would be hanging in the famous Café Slavia. And finally, which country makes the real absent? I don't think that any country has the right to make a claim like that. And I know that now in the comments all of my French and Swiss folks are going to be telling me about Dr. Pierre Ordinaire, who in 1792 created absent. Later, his recipe was capitalized on by Pernod that is widely regarded as the OG absinthe distillery. But I don't think that you can create a monopoly on a drink that was invented 2000 years ago. It's as if Germans now would say that they created beer. And to quote our absinthe expert here, absinthe is not defined in the laws about spirit-based beverages, which leads to anybody claiming that anything is absent. I've stumbled upon a couple of articles that discouraged people from trying check absinthe. But even more surprising was the fact that when I went to the bars, they also tried to convince me not to try Czech absinthe. I actually went to Green Devil first, and they told me that Czech absinthe isn't real absinthe, that it's very bitter, and I'm gonna regret getting it basically. But it was great! So afterwards, just to make sure that I'm not missing out on anything, I tried Pernod absinthe in Hemingway bar to compare the tastes. And you know what? French absinthe tasted similar to the Czech one. Czech absinthe is not so bitter as they say, so definitely try it, just keep the fire away from it. The tea is that the French and the Swiss say that absinthe should be distilled and it should have anise in it. But that is just their production method. Absinthe means wormwood, so wormwood should be the prevalent flavor according to the bohemian absinthe makers. Also, some bars put the absinthe producers that they have deals with first on the list, so just keep that in mind. 
To sum it up, absinthe seems to be quite a divisive topic. A lot of people think that the real absinthe is only with anise and it should be distilled. But other people say that any warm wood-based drink should be called absinthe. When you go to Prague bars, you will often see that they light absinthe on fire, which does not really improve the reputation of the Czech absinthe among the connoisseurs. If you want good absinthe, you really should look for it. Okay, guys, let me know what you think in the comments and I'm gonna go for a run now because this absinthe really kicked me. See you next week.